giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, and giving honor to my spiritual father in the absence of my spiritual mother, Apostle William T. Ford Sr. and Co-Pastor Glendora Ford. To the officers, the mothers, deacons, trustees, stewards, elders, ministers, the body of Christ, I give honor to every one of you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here. We thank you for protecting us all day long, knowing you're going to protect us when we leave here. I ask that you open up everyone's spiritual ears to hear what you gave me. Decrease me and increase you. And I pray that this meal will be accepted for the nourishment of our spiritual bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. My topic title of my sermon is a formula or equation. Unity plus love equal a powerful impact. Subtitle, God's Equation. Now before I get into it, I had a part of a video of a movie called The Great Wall, which is actually of China. Yes, it's fictional, but what was shown in that, since I can't visually uh, let you guys see it, I would like for you to close your eyes as I describe this. Picture like 50,000 section of an army and they're in royal blue and gold. They're the infantry. Picture 50,000 in blue and gold. They're the archers. Picture 100,000 that are in brown and gold. They're the spear people. Picture 50,000 in white and gold. And they are the shielders. They have shields. Picture 50,000 in black and gold. And they are the paratroopers with weapons. They're prepared for a war. This is supposed to be the most magnificent and powerful army for China. You can open your eyes. They were so awesome and powerful that when I saw that part of the movie, didn't go into the rest of it because I looked at what they were saying, but unity is what I saw. Now these people were taken when they were kids to be in this army. So they got to know each other. They got to love each other. They were concerned with everybody's need before theirs. They were willing to self-sacrifice themselves for each other and the protection of China. And the only thing that stood between them and the innocent Chinese people who didn't know what was coming was this magnificent, powerful army at the wall of China. I thought that was awesome. And I said, oh my God, if we were like that. And pastor's been talking about it. We need to be 
unified. We need to get to know each other and love each other. And if we do that, we'll be a powerful impact here in the community, globally. It's nothing we couldn't do in Christ Jesus. And it's obvious that it's important because our apostle has been talking about it. He's been talking about unity. He's been talking about love. When are we going to do it? Now keep that great army in your head. I'll be reading from the Women's Study Bible, the New King James Version. My scripture is 1 Peter 3 and 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender hearted, be courteous. Imagine if we were unified like that unique army. How powerful we would be. Now the members of that army, they loved each other. Their gifts and their skills, they were quick to use. Because whoever recruited them watched them as they became a family to see what they were good at. And then they assigned them to a certain unit. Male or female. And they practice. They studied to be good at what they were called to do. Is that not what Apostle's been telling us? Are we doing that? Some of us are busy in hating each other, gossiping about each other, looking at each other funny judging. Imagine the energy that we've been wasting. Negative energy could be turned into positive energy if we were on one mind and we focused on each other and the word. We got to develop that skill like that army. If I'm not mistaken, they took them around the age of six. When they were ready, they were like 25 and up. That's a long time to get ready. Look at Jesus. It took him a good while to get ready. Each and one of us has a certain amount of time to get ready, but I believe that the reason why Apostles have been talking about it is our time is short. Many of us should have already been ready. Now I've been here almost 25 years. I'm not the same person that I was when I first got here. Nowhere near. And thank God for that. Because see, I was the type of person and I told Pastor this. I had a t-shirt I had made, kill them all, let God separate them. And I meant that thing. If I couldn't get you, I paid somebody to get you. And I paid somebody to make sure that person got you. They witnessed it. I'm the type of person that if you were somebody I needed to get in this church back then, I'd blow this place up and sit on the corner and call the cops to come get me. no remorse. I came from a thug family. We hustled, but we sure could fight, we could shoot. Now my grandmother, she liked to cut, but I liked the 357. My mom too. I gave her mine before I came here. Look at God. Look at God. I got martial arts degrees, black belt. I can do harm with my hands. I don't need a weapon. But God has delivered me to the point 
I don't think that way anymore. Have I been tried? Yes. And I've, I've cried to pastor, why is this going on? I know what to do in the streets, but I'm kind of hard on, you know, what to do in the church when somebody act like the streets. And then it pulls me back. And I know I can't do that. And looking at David with Psalm 69, I know he knew how I felt. Because that's my favorite <laughs> Psalms. And I be talking to God all the time. Now, you know, they did so and so and so. If they say they love me, why are they doing this? We got to get to a point that we really love each other. Like Christ loves us. Now, the importance of being unified and caring for each other is through love. We must submit to the Holy Spirit to help us loving toward our brother and our sisters. That's the only way it's going to happen. You're going to have to submit. You're going to have to be truthful with God. As well as caring for them, regardless of their weakness, mistakes, you still got to love them. Do you know you have to love them even if you don't love yourself? Till you ask God to help you love yourself. They're not a part of what's going on with you. Unless you tell them. And then they should pray for you. Not gossip about you. We got to pray for each other. We got to pray for guidance to help each other. Because we don't know what anybody's going through. I don't know what none of you guys are going through. But I pray for y'all. In the morning. And before I go to bed, because I know you're going through something. I'm going through something, so I know you're going through something. So as Philippians, look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. I know this is a lot to take in. However, this is what the word says. Apostle has been repeating to us about love and about being unified and having one mind in Christ Jesus. Not in ourselves, but in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine if you focus on Jesus? Now over in Proverbs 16 and 8, I'm going to paraphrase it. I keep my eyes on the Lord, and he is on my right hand, and I will not be shaken. Okay, so that means you got to have your focus right. You got to be in your lane, nobody else's lane, and it, whatever you over, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. So now if we have one mind, and we had that unity and we loved each other, we'd be powerful. Okay. Close your eyes again. Remember that army. Where would you be? What section would you be in? You can open your eyes again. Are we going to use our gifts? And our skills for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I see how powerful we could be when I saw the beginning of this movie. I didn't need to see anything else. I was shocked and the Holy Spirit said this is what we should be like. So I started preparing this sermon last year. And I didn't know when I was going to be able to. Minister it. Had no clue. But look. Here I am. I wanted to let you know. 1 John 4. 11 talks about knowing God through love. The other scriptures go with a question about love. The source of love. 
is God. 1 John 4, 7 to 11 and 16. The model of God is Christ. John 3, 16. Manifestation of love for others is John 1, 4 and 21. The extent of love is sacrifice. That's John 3.16. The results of love abiding in presence is 1 John 4.12 and 16. And God in life with the love. John 1, 3 and 14. Now, how powerful could we be? Remember Joshua and the Battle of Jericho? Wasn't that powerful how they went around that city, around that wall? And they were all focused. Joshua 6, 1 through 5. That unity that Joshua had with his army that they had, they followed what the Lord said and did exactly what God said. Now we know the power shook the walls down. Imagine us, could we shake down some walls? Yeah, we could, right here on Murkison Road. We could shake down some walls, guys. If we all had one mind, one love, Focus on God. We could shake a lot of walls on Murkison Road and keep going. Even downtown. We got to get ourselves together. Because we're missing out on the power. We're missing out on the love of the people. If the people saw how we loved each other. We're unified. We don't have to have on different colors, but we can have it in our mind. I'm a warrior, so I need to be over here with Sister Sue, or Brother John, because I'm a warrior. And Lakeisha, she could be dealing with weapons, bow and arrow, gun. She would get over there with Elder Peel. Whatever you're good at in the Lord, that's what God can use. But half of us don't do it. We're busy sitting in the sanctuary with our arms fold or we're on our phone looking to see what to eat, where to go shop, looking at Facebook. TikTok and anything else. And then when something happens, you run running to a pastor, a co-pastor, or one of us. I got into this, help me, da, da, da. But where were you in service? Did you say a kind word to everybody? Did you mean it? Or were you thinking about something else instead of Jesus and his people? You know, we, we got many people in the church that's guilty of that. This is a hospital where we get better. But you can't get better if you don't do what the doctors say. Jesus Christ is the doctor. Apostle is assistant to that. Apostle is a specialist. And whatever Jesus gives him to give to us, by faith, we should believe it. Not pick and choose on what we want of it, or we don't like what was said. You know, people do that. They pick and choose who's going to minister if they're going to show up. 
if you really had the right kind of mind and you will focus on God, we all were. This church would be full. Every time the doors was open. No picking and choosing. We'd be here eating the next meal to get stronger. You know when we go out from the church, we get attacked. This week, I got attacked in so many ways I couldn't even believe it. I've never failed my inspection of my apartment and it was over a door. You hear me, a door, they claimed, they looked at it. Oh, well, your shipper boy is not gonna let that door close. And I said, yes, the close has been like that for almost 12 years. And I passed all the other time. Well, no, we coming back, you gotta move it. I didn't move it. I closed the door so when they came, they saw the door was closed. And they went to open the door. And it was like, well, we guess you were right, pass. I've been missing my glasses, dad, for more than a week. I done asked everybody, even here at the church, because the last time I had them was the Golden Ages meet and greet. I'm trying to get the sermon together. Couldn't get it together, sorry. Couldn't get it together. I sat down and I was crocheting and I dropped a needle on the side. So I put my hand down off in there and I said, Holy Spirit, let me find this needle. But I still need these glasses. How about the glasses and the needles were together? <laughs> I just had a good time in the Lord over that. Okay? A good time. Was getting ready to come here. Amazon brought my package, my uh, remote to my car. It's worn. So I've been jimmy rigging it with a, with a uh, ballpoint pen. Get it, open it up. I'm in the car, getting ready to go. It's the wrong type. It doesn't have grooves in the key. It says straight. But it's the year of my car and it's the make of my car but it don't fit my car. So I had to go find the old key set off in my purse. I said, Lord, okay. So I get it in there, went to the gas station. I left early, went to the gas station, told the guy what number my gas was gonna be on. Yeah, I getting rid of the pump, nothing coming out. I kept doing the thing and I was like, now I gotta walk all the way back in there. I said, Lord, please let somebody come. This lady drove up and she was getting out. I need to get some cigarettes. I said, baby, can you do me a favor? Can you run in there and tell the guy it's pump four? I don't know what pump he got it on, but it, it ain't coming out of four. Got my gas and I, I was so glad to get here and then forgot my towel. And I said, okay, Satan. You doing everything that you can to keep me from getting it. But it's all right. I'm here. You guys are here. And I'm standing longer than I've stood in a while. So now, my question to you is what are you going to do? Are you going to ask God for forgiveness for being disobedient? Are you going to submit to God and ask for his mind and be focused on unity as well as loving your brothers and your sisters, really loving them like Christ does? See, this was hard for me. I had to do an inventory of myself. I don't know if you guys do that, but I do. I had to do an altar call on myself. So this is what happened. I sung this song, and I remember when I got saved. Preacher, pray for me. I want to be saved. 
I know I done wrong. I want to be safe. So as I sung that, I knew I had done wrong because I was loving just like some people were conditionally. And that's wrong. And if you have the gift where you know somebody's lying to you, you just smile. That's wrong. You pray for the person. And I was doing that. My kids know I've been having that gift for a long time. I know when you lying to me. And I don't say nothing. See, back in the day, I would just say, well, you give them enough rope. They'll hang themselves. Ever been there? But I had to repent on that. I had to repent on loving everybody. It's not that I don't love. And I love helping people. But now, I'm easy to get hurt. Now, it's not so much. But before, it was. I had to be like a duck so it would run off my back and not hurt me. Because those people who hurt me, they were hurting. And they were lashing out on the closest person to them. That's what people in, with mental health issues do. And we do it here in the church. We have some people struggling with breaking out of their cliques. Because that's conditional. You like me, I like you. We think the same. We wear the same clothes. Or we ride the, drive the same car. Our house has almost got the same thing in it. What's they going to do when the enemy hits you? Nothing. Do they call you when they get in trouble? No. They call an apostle. So what's the point of having a click? What's the point of having favorites? They can't help you. They barely helping themselves. Seriously. And you're wasting the gift and the talents that God gave you for the click. And not using it in the kingdom. Every one of us need to use everything that's in our earthly body for the kingdom. Apostle said he wants everything to be used out of him before he leaves here. I do too. I want that because I want God to say, good and faithful servant, well done. That's what's important. Not, oh, I did this with Sally Sue so many times, but, you know, she's my favorite. No, that ain't going to fly. And in closing, we got to do this in order. I do advise that if you have a problem with this and what I have said, I think a possum could help you out. I can't help you other than pray for you. Because you might need some extra help. When you see what your inventory is, like I did, and I had to go to Apostle about me. So, to have the ultimate power means God's equation. Unity plus love equal powerful impact. Thank you.